this was very widely, uh, there was wide consultation with all the tripartites. Everyone was on board. The, the labor movement were supportive, the employers were supportive. And now let's so look at the, what happens to, to, to the employees, uh, uh, employers who have not been remitting. Do they also benefit? Do they qualify? Or do they lose out on the months that the employer did not pay for the, for, for, for the pension? Well, there are two ways of looking at that. There is, we, are, we are taking a very reasonable approach in that all that we are looking for are 60 monthly contributions. They don't need to be consecutive. They just need to be 60. So you may have gaps. As long as we have 60, we'll pay you the, the 20%. Now, for those where the employers never remitted, there is a scheme where we are now following up to see who, whether it was really an issue of non-remittance or it was an issue of misapplication. There are some, like I have, have a case today that uh, uh, two, two John Millers were talking to me. One John Miller in Chile La Bombe, the other one in, uh, in Muflira. And because of this 20% uh, partial withdrawal, they've discovered that there's a problem on the account. Because both of them worked for the same uh, company, the company would interchangeably use their social security numbers. So in one time, in one bit, uh, the, the contributions will go to John Miller, Chile Labombe, and the other will go to John Miller, Moflira. But we are dealing with that. We are helping all those to get down to the bottom of that. As long as there was a remittance, we'll be able to pay you. I, I, I want you to be very clear on this one. If my employer never paid anything at all to NAPSA, but then maybe paid once and registered me, do I lose out? And well the deductions were made from my pay? Yeah, You don't lose out. I mean, this is not something that ends in a year. This is a new benefit that is introduced for life. So all that will do, the other works that we'll be doing in the background, make sure we get in touch with those, uh, those employers. Hence the reason we're asking for employment history as part of the onboarding process, so that we can now go back and deal with the employers and say, look, your employee worked for this period, you gave them an employment record, a certificate, and you didn't remit in this part, you need to pay. As soon as they, they make the payments, they make the 60 months, you are entitled. You do not need to claim that today. This benefit does not expire. It will not expire. It's part of the, the benefits that are covered under the pension scheme for life. So there's really no need to feel that you are going to be left out. Whenever your account is ready, you get access. Maybe I, I was going to ask you that. Do you think residents understand fully the idea of partial withdrawal and their benefits? I think they do. Uh, if you look at the Going interest... Going back to what you're getting. Yeah. If you look at the interest that uh, the Zambians expressed the moment uh, the president and uh, the UPND government announced that they were going to introduce that, I think there was a lot of interest from a wide spectrum of Zambians. And for us, that is clearly an indication, one, one interest. Second, there was a lot of debate. Those who were for the idea and those who were against the idea. That debate prepared a lot of people to understand the pros or what could happen if you, mis if you misapply the funds. That's why as NAPSA, we never shut down the, the discussion of those who were against, because we knew that they were actually providing financial education in one way or another even though they were criticizing the, 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 the move, but they were letting those who they would be beneficiaries that there's this risk that you need to address, and the risk will be basically misapplication. Mm -hmm. But that's a risk that you cannot say someone is going to misapply because there's a 20% partial. That's a, a person's outlook towards finances. You can misapply your pension. Mm -hmm. Now, our understanding or our position is that you cannot design policies on the basis of the 2% that are, that are not going to, to adhere to what the policy objective was. What about the 98? So then the focus should be on the 98. That's our position. So I'm, I'm going to get that to that later, but then maybe I need to ask, uh, there's a lot of information flying around social media, internet and everywhere. Is, is, are these withdrawals being taxed as income? Not at all. The, the tax was done at the time the, the payee was, was, was remitted. So these are tax-free um, funds coming through back to the owners. There's, there's no tax on the 20% the, the, the withdrawal. Pensions are not taxed. So you get your free money. It's free now, as, as, at, as of Thursday, you had announced that 27 people had been paid and the amount was coming to slightly above 1.3 million kwacha. Others are saying 
27 over a period of two days is too small a number. And then is this how you're going to process? 27 people no every two really. days? No. Then it's, it's probably going to take forever. And, and wha wha were you ready for this? I think we were. I mean, if, if you are put in a position or if, if you are sitting as NAPSA and you know that there's a reform that is coming through and you are part and parcel of that reform, I don't see how you can ever get prepared. Most of the work that was done on that reform was from the administration side, where we're working with government, our Ministry of Labor, trying to make sure that we actually have a solid, a solid uh, proposal or uh, option of how to implement that on the table. Behind that, there were dedicated members of staff that spent I don't know how many hours just trying to crack and design a system that can help our members get access to their fund. So from a prepared position, we were prepared. And that's why from the first day that the president signed, the very next day, we're processing. Now then the, the number, the concern is the numbers. That's, that's too little. That number 20 was at 27. That number was at Thursday. We are standing at 12 million, 12.4 million, 303. Money or people? 303 people, 12.4 million paid. Paid out. Yes. Now remember, this, 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 this number changes. It has no weekend because it's online. So even as I'm sitting here, there could be someone somewhere who's getting paid. So once you push in the claim, it's actually just through the financial system. It's like you making a transfer. When you make a transfer, Grivazo, you don't need to wait till the bank is open. The transfer happens. So that is continuous. The part where we, most of the people were coming back, we say it's taking time. Yes, we were going through some of the processes that some people People came up with very different uh, problems, and we're trying to fix that. Those who were successful, we put in contingencies that went back to making sure that we're not losing an hour. And that's why you see that by tomorrow, those who still have the option, the, 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 the deal that NAPSA closes, by tomorrow now, when they go and check their accounts, they'll realize that they are ready to make a claim because we have been processing over the weekend. Now, the queues, the queues on, on at your offices seem to suggest that you are you, you, you're under siege, you're overwhelmed. How, how are you dealing with that? On the positive side, maybe that's how popular this, uh, the benefit is. Maybe that's a success. But now dealing with the people that are claiming. You notice that the queues start as early as 5.30. That's how we are Zambians. We, when there's something like that, we don't want to be left out. And we is that of an, a vote of no confidence into your no. e platform? I mean, people would, 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 if people are going to choose to queue, and avoid using their phone in the comfort of their homes and offices, then there must be something wrong. Uh, Gravazo, you haven't asked me if there are any numbers coming through uh, on online. On the first day, we almost had 50-50, with people claiming, uh, putting in their stuff online, and those were coming to the office. All that we did was, those that need to come to the office, we won't turn them away. And we are dealing with everyone who appears at the office till the last man leaves. So there's no one who's turned away and told to come back tomorrow. We, we don't operate on the tomorrow basis. We deal with you today. If there are issues to be resolved, our back office is going to deal with the issues that need to be resolved on your account so that we can push you to the next stage where you can claim. Overwhelmed? I think it's an issue of understanding that even when you design a system, there's no system that has one option of operation. All systems have to have a plan B. And our plan B was to put bodies or staff to address. So while this was going on, we were actually recruiting people. We recruited over 100 staff just to come and beef up the staff to address specifically for this and the Zambia National Provident Fund. So we, we, we are aware of what we're doing, and we anticipated that in case we have an overload, this is what we're going to do. And at this juncture, Gravaza, I must, I, must, I must give a lot of gratitude to our staff, who some of them even though they are not in that part of the business, are volunteering to actually go in and assist. That just shows the commitment from the NAPSA perspective that we are focused on the objective, pay the people. Now you've got complaints uh, coming through, particularly for the e-platform. Uh, some people are saying it's too complicated. Okay. You're asking them for the proof of employment um, history. And, and, and as of now, a lot of complaints that we're getting is that only five banks are on your portal. Is there a way of simplifying this, adding more banks, simplifying your form? I think we are open to suggestions on how to 
if there are any issues or challenges on the process where people are finding it uh, a little bit cumbersome to, to deal. And so far we have, we have changed part of the processes in, in from the feedback we are receiving from the users. We go back and make amendments to some of the processes. Now, some of the processes, we may not change them because there is an underlying security issue that we do not want to pay the wrong person. And that's very cardinal for us. So for some of those, I think the, the members will have to bear with us that we are trying to protect their money and therefore they should be a little bit patient with us and we'll, we'll deal with it. One thing that we are committed to is we want to make sure that everyone gets their money as soon as the process is done. Why do we have a few banks then? The few banks, it's we are not restricting. And this is something that I'm appealing to our, to our, to our bankers out there, that we opened up to every bank to actually come on board and make sure that they can, they can service their, mem their, their customers as they are making the withdrawals. So banks are now coming on board, some of those that came in late, but we are seeing also an interest from others that we didn't even consider as banks that are coming on board. Zambia National Building Society, MD called just there and said, well, we have customers as well. That for us is a very positive, uh, positive uh, reaction in that everyone wants to just come in and save. And really, maybe people don't see the, the extent of the, uh, this process, what is involved. This process is not just restricted at NAPSA. It has the mobile networks involved. It has the banks involved. It has us involved. We have the registration office getting involved. So it's a much bigger scheme than, than what you see at, at the front end. But all that is just trying to make sure that the right reversal gets uh, his benefits and not the wrong one. People are, are wondering, why, 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 do, why are you insisting on employment history? I mean, Can you just deal with the NRC, identify them positively, check the number of, of months, it's 60, check the age, it's 45, you're good to go. It's important for employment history because if you came to us and said, I'm missing, I'm two months out of uh, the 60 that required, I'm at 58, and I know that I worked for ZNBC. When we asked ZNBC, they said, actually, no, he just worked for 58 months. That's why we're asking for that. Part of it is to actually clarify that this, you worked for the number, for the number of months that you worked, or for the number of years that you worked, and also that we are actually dealing with you and not someone else. It's, it's the pension administration part is a little bit more complex in that you actually have to always have the right confirmation that the, the member who is accessing a benefit is the correct member and not anyone else. Let, let, let's, let's, get, let, let's get this, uh, this question. The arguments that the money that is actually being offered is too little to invest. Maybe I need to ask you, is one able to calculate what they're entitled to on their own without waiting for you to give them the amount? Yes, they can if they know the, the, the formula. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not the amount that you contributed that you actually get out of uh, NAPSA. NAPSA grows that money to cover you for the wage inflation and also pay some interest. Now, those, that money is not fixed. The, 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 the growth factor, if I may call it that, is not fixed. It's something that is determined by the Zambia Statistics Office every year, and then they give us the, the value. That's the value we use for wage inflation, to cover you for wage inflation. But the good news is, when you go to our system, as you are claiming, you will actually find the calculation. It will show you your raw contributions and how much you are entitled to. And it will also go a step further and show you how much of the 20%, what your 20% will be if you waited one year, two years, three years. It will actually show you the amount. So it, it's, it's a calculation that some, some people out there, we know that they've been able to, to actually come back and do their calculations on their own. But we could, we could share that it's not, it's not a secret. But it's there on our system. Once you go to the claim, the claim uh, stage, you'll find the calculation in the, on your page as you access. And then you'll see wha how much you'll be entitled to if you waited just a few more months. Argument that the money is too little to invest? Too little to invest. Average, how many, how what you've processed, how much are people getting? Serious For money. argument's sake. Serious money. In the, in the, in the, in the, 
the, the, the, the, the area figure that you announced of the 57, the average. 57, 1.3 million. Yeah, the average was 48,000 kwacha. 48,000 kwacha by any standard is a lot of money. And that's just an average. Some people were going as far as 120, 150, 160. The lowest was getting maybe about 25 or 20. But the issue of not being enough, that is subjective. I, the people who say that end what, 200,000 kwacha a month, for them, if they calculated at 20%, I'm sure they will, they, will, they will look at it and say this is very little. But if they just did a little bit of research, and maybe, like I said, go to uh, the Citizenship Empowerment Commission, the CEC, and ask on average how much, how much do people get? Or have you seen applications that go as far as 15,000? And if the answer is yes, then our 20,000 is good enough. Because it depends on what you want to use it for. I have uh, examples of young people who came me up and said, when I get my money, whatever it is, I'll make sure I buy a government bond. One of them said, whatever it is, I'm going to put it down as a down payment on my plot. There's a 25,000 kwacha remaining. Whatever you give me, I'll, I'll pay for my plot. So the issue of how much is subjective. It's, it's a debatable issue. I want yes. you to hold your thought, uh, DG. Uh, we are hosting the NAPSA Director General, and you can interact with us on our WhatsApp line by sending a message to 0973-433-802, or you can call on 2530-25. Just now, I think we get some messages, and, and, and DJ, maybe you can, we, we, can, we can get to see what people want to ask you uh, so that uh, you get to answer what, uh, what, what they want to, to find out from you as Director General. Um, you need to check. Uh, there we go. Please find out on my behalf from the Director General NAPSA why my contributions on my statement dropped from 245 to 193 without an explanation. That's one of the messages. Kay. Good evening. Thank you for your wonderful program. Your system is so cumbersome. <laughs> Have you considered making it user-friendly, not everyone who wants to claim is educated. Uh, in your, know your client, well, how long should someone wait for the money after applying? Can I then we've got another one. Good evening, the statement that I receive monthly for my contributions is different from how much is showing in the system. The missing months are about 60. How should I resolve the issue? I hope you're taking note. <laughs> No, <laughs> but you um, all of that. Yeah. I I've got the, the last one there. Good evening, Director General. What are you going to do with employers who are not following NAPSA procedures or acts concerning contributions? Because you find that the person has worked more than 20 years, but the only contributions which are there is less than 30,000 kwacha only. I would like to know what happens when one has double contributions due to having two jobs at a time. How do you normalize the names of my husband, which appears surnames instead of maiden names in case of female employees because the system is rejecting such? So you've got a handful yes. of, of, of questions. Maybe you could start uh, with, with the last one. <coughs> OK, I, th I think there's always, we always go through a process of verification. And that's what this onboarding process is all about. So whatever the names uh, that are different from the system and what the, the, the member has, that's something that we can solve. It's just an issue of providing the, the required documentation, and we should be able to deal with that. So that's, it's not a showstopper, if I may put it that way. You'll still be able, the, 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 the member who is asking, they'll still be able to get their 20% their con their withdraw as soon as we resolve that issue. So you've got a problem there. Others are asking about disparities between the statements they receive and what they're getting now when they want to apply. I think that's, that's where is that problem coming from. That's quite strange, and uh, I would like to would like to receive most of those so that we go through and find out what is causing the disparity because it's it's not supposed to. We are not supposed to have a disparity. Someone is missing sixty months. Missing sixty months. That's missing six months. I, I hope it they're not saying it's from the fact that the earlier statement at six months, the other one does not. Because if it's an issue of checking and you are looking at your employment record and you are missing six months, that, that is something that we knew, uh, we know is possible. 
because of the compliance levels of employers. So this process is actually helping us to deal with that as well. Because now for the first time, and, uh, and I think I can firmly say for the first time, every member is now interested in knowing how much money they have on their account. Prior to this, I don't think anyone paid much attention to the NAPSA, to their NAPSA account. They were paying attention to their commercial bank accounts, but not the NAPSA account. This partial withdrawal has changed the game. Now everyone is going to be interested in knowing how much money is in their NAPSA account. And that for us is a positive. This has a long-term benefit. As long as we can get your account, now that you, are, you as the owner, you are going to have time to look at your account and make sure it's up to date, that simplifies the process of paying your benefits going forward. Because if everything is up to date, you have no queries. At the time you are retiring, you don't need to remind us. We will remind you, Javazo, you are about to retire. Which option are you, are you exercising? And here's how much money you have. Because we are, we are, we are confident. And we are going to do our part making sure that the employers are also uh, paying up uh, the contributions as for due. They have very little excuse now. The penalties they were talking about have been slashed. The new law allows for the waiver of penalties. So really, it's now just an issue of compliance. So but that question keeps on coming up, did you? You, you, you need to... The one on the The 16. one on people who um, um, employers not, not, not remitting on behalf oh of no, the employee. Oh, no, we'll deal with that and one. And, 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 and what, do the what does the employee do? The em all that the employee all needs to do is... That's why fill in the form. No, not really filling in the form. I think this, this does not need to be a one-off uh, process. That only happens because a 20% withdrawal is at stake or is, is, is offered. This needs to be a process that every account holder goes through. And if you look at, if you ask most of the account holders now, they are receiving two types of SMSs. They are receiving one which confirms that ZMBC has paid for Trevazo. They are also receiving one which says your employer has not paid for you. Why? We need you to come up quickly to be part of the enforcement that you need to remind your employer, my pay slip shows that you have deducted. NAPSA is saying you haven't remitted. We are also going to do our part and make sure we deal with these employers as quickly as possible. They have very little excuse now. These are people's savings. Everyone needs to get involved. The employers need to do their part. The owner of the account needs to do their part. NAPSA will do our part. Together. Your system is cumbersome. That question came up. The system is cumbersome. Not everybody is educated. Yes, and that's why we had plan B. For those who cannot deal with the system, they can come through to our offices, and that's what we have been getting to get help. Our staff are there available. We are now even looking at ways of ensuring that we can deal with people as quickly as possible by maybe possibly extending hours. But we'll get back to the people with an announcement very soon. The idea is to those who cannot, who are not tech, uh, tech savvy, can come to us and we help them. So you, you, you can interact with us, like we said earlier, by sending a text on our WhatsApp line, it's on 73433-8002, or you can call us on 2530-25. We have a caller on the line, uh, Sunday from Kitwe. Good evening and uh, welcome to the program. Yes, good evening, Mr. Grevazio, and good evening to Mr. Muyango. Please go ahead and uh, make your contributions. Yes, uh, I would like to ask the question concerning a situation whereby an employer, I, I mean an employee receives two contributions from uh, the two employers. That is the previous employer and the latest employer. There are situations whereby someone has got two contributions within the same month, the two contributions for September. Now we are being told that we need to submit those test statements that indicate two contributions. Why can't NAPSA just follow up where those uh, employers who are limiting money to uh, NAPSA? Ah, I mean, why can't NAPSA make follow up instead of asking the employee to submit the pay slips, which might be lost uh, due to the longest period of time that has taken place since those contributions took place? Sunday, thank you so much. Uh, you've got that question. Yes. I think I'll start off by saying uh, our system actually accepts two contributions in a, in, 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 in a single month. 
So that should not be a problem, Mr. Mr. Sunday. And now on the issue of uh, why we're asking for information, there's always a first option that you have to exercise. And when that option does not work, we go to, to the second option. So he's suggesting that we should deal with the employer. Yes, as we get more numbers of a particular employee that has a list of queries coming up, we'll know how to engage that employer. But where some are providing that information with ease, other members are coming up and when they're uploading the information that we ask for and we're able to process. But don't despair, Mr. Sunday. We are there to, 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 to save you. And uh, we'll, we'll, walk, we'll walk through till we solve your problem and make sure you get your 20%. We have another call on the line. Ephraim Chileshe from McKinney. Please uh, go ahead and make your contribution. Yes, uh, I just wanted to find out from the Director General how long does it take uh, if someone applies for a partial, this partial, partial payment, how long does it take? Thank you so much, Ephraim. How long does it take for, for, for the money to hit your account? But then I think with this question, you need to get it together with an earlier question, which we saw in the text. Yes. If you have double jobs and you're getting double payment, mm. does it reflect? How do you deal with that? If you have, I'll start with the double jobs. If you have double jobs and you're getting double contributions meted every month, our system handles that. It allows for that. So that should not be a problem. The two employers can remit using your social security number. Your social security number is a key number that identifies where the payment should go. So that's, that should not be uh, a, an, a hindrance in any way. Now on how long how it long? should take, I must admit that in the first, few, the first few days when we started, the process is much slower, but our intended uh, turnaround time is within one day, you should be able to get uh, your, your money in your account as long as everything is updated. So the system will actually tell you when you have completed all the uh, the requirements. When you fulfill that, it goes green. By going green, it means you are ready to make a claim. The moment you make a claim, that second part of the process is much faster than the first part of the process. So if you complete, so you get your confirmation as well as your payment yes, within 24 hours. Within 24 hours, if the process is done uh, successfully, without any hindrances. I like I said, Gravazo, I must admit that the first few days, yes, there was a delay. But that's something you should do. You should see most of those that made their submissions before Friday. They should check now. I'm sure they'll find that they've been pushed to a stage where they're now going to make a claim. We, we have another caller, Franco from Kitu. Please go ahead and make your contribution. Thank you very much. Good evening, Gravazio, and uh, good evening, DG. Good evening. My uh, uh, comment to the DG is that don't you think you announced a bit too early that the platform would be open for partial benefits because the day that you announced that the, the website would be open, there was nothing until late in the evening. And even then, it was uh, very difficult like to make attachments and there was so much confusion. So my question is, did you go through rigorous testing to ensure that the many errors and challenges that uh, people are facing were resolved. For example, up to now, I still can't upload my uh, documents that are required to prove that I worked for a particular employer. Thank you. Thank you. Your were, system's still rich. Were we ready? I think we were. Did we anticipate all the problems that were going to happen? No, and I think that's part of systems development. Anyone who has worked with the system development will know that there are certain issues that arise that we may not have provided for. One thing that people keep on talking about is the fact that you know, NAPSA was not ready because the system was behaving this way. You cannot test for 150,000 people trying to claim at the same time. You can, you can do simulations, but you will not know exactly how the system is going to behave. Some of these issues we are learning as we go and we are addressing them. The key focus for us is a process is not a hindrance. We shall solve the process and make sure that the people get their money. That's our focus. Our focus is to push you to a stage where you'll be able to make a claim and get paid. Are we going to have teething problems? Of course we are. Are we going to solve them? Yes, we are. Right now, our IT guys have not, been, have not taken a break. They have just been working 24 hours trying to find some of the issues that are causing the, 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 the slow process. 
and they've identified some of the problems and we're dealing with them. What have uh, the other staff been doing? The other staff have been working over the weekend making sure that everyone who had uh, a claim going through, they are ready to claim. So we, we, are, we have plan B to all the issues as they arise. But one thing for sure is, if, if people are talking about systems, the choice is simple. Were we supposed to wait till we, we, we have a system that is perfect before we start paying people the partial? I think for that question, you should ask the people on the queue. So, so which which one which one is your preference? We wanted to wait. Now, yes. Maybe as, as we as we get in some messages, I need I need to ask you this question. Others are asking when I get my twenty percent, in simple terms and and and, and, and explain simply, uh, when I retire, will I have enough money to meet my basic need, accommodation, food, medical bills? I'll put it this way. First of all, we should recognize that the 20% partial is not mandatory. You actually make a choice. And that's why part of the choice is that you, you have to realize that your future benefits will be reduced by 20%. You'll be only getting at 80%. Now, there's a second question in that crevasse that you're posing, which says, will that be adequate? The issue of pension adequacy is something that we should tackle, not because there's a partial but because we need to make sure that there's sufficient money in retirement for people to survive. That's not because there's a partial withdrawal. But then the partial aggravates it. Uh, no, no. You take away my 20%. Yes. After that, am I able to get an, an earning that is going to see me through my old age? And the choice is yours. Now, if you take that money and invest it wisely, which is what most of the people that we're talking to are trying to do, then you are actually creating your retirement revenue streams, while you still have the energy. And that's the whole issue about the passion. And let's not mix, it, mix that up with the fact that some people may, may misapply it. Even if they're going to get the pension, they're still going to misapply it. That is just a fact of life. We cannot run away from it. But let's look at those who are, who are doing something. I have a Mishek Kaoma, who, when he got his ZNPF, went to His Royal Highness Mukuni, and ask for a piece of land. He gets a piece of land, he buys goats, and he buys uh, orange trees. He comes back and says, I'm getting my partial, and I'm going to beef up what I've already done on my small land in Livingstone. That's, that's a story about partial, and that's what we should be focusing on. The few people that might misuse the money, that's, 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 that's life. But when you say but few, maybe you, you haven't done the research, and you, you're saying few will misuse, uh, many will not misuse. But I'll, I'll allow you to hold your thought to begin a caller. Uh, Mr. Chilongo from Chirundu, please uh, go ahead and make your contribution. No, it's gone. We can take messages. I think you are waiting for too long. Um, there we go. Um, good evening. Can the NAPSA DJ explain why we can't edit employment history when one has made an error? Why are we... Why why we are supposed to account for stray contributions, yet NAPSA knows where all contributions came from. And lastly, why can't sign up because our names during SIM registration were entered vice versa from NAPSA records, yet the NRC number is the same. So you've got that, that complication. I hope you've noted, DG. I registered with NAP in NAPSA earlier before the announcement was done. In my case, I've forgotten those security answers and my account has been blocked. What should I do to proceed to initiate my claim? The issue of the banking details need, uh, needs to be looked at seriously. Why can't NAPSA just allow the member to submit their banking details like the ZRA pay as you earn refund? Yeah, so you've got the questions. Um, that, uh, before you get the, those, maybe let's get Jackson from Kitro. Jackson, uh, please go ahead and make a contribution. Yes, sir. Um, my, my concern is about the system. Uh, this uh, stray contribution, the stray contribution and the, the, the document that I needed, like the proof of whether one worked and the, the 
uh, the termination letter. Some of us, we stopped work years ago. And how can I retrieve all those documents and for the system to, for my procedure to go through? The history of my employment, it is there, but they want me to add the, the documents which are not with me right now. How am I going to be assisted? How are we going to go ahead with this system? Thank you so much. So you can start with a question uh, from, the, from the caller, then we go to the messages. Uh, I think I'll start with, with the, the message. With the 80%. The, the, okay. 80%. The, 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 the issue is saying that we didn't carry out the research. I think, Gravazo, you need to ask yourself a question. If I'm, I'm assuming that you are saying, I said 2%, maybe the bad, they failed to utilize the money properly. You're saying, no, we haven't. Maybe vice versa. Maybe vice versa. Okay. So let's look at the Zambian economy right now, if we said vice versa. The people that have made something out of the 95%, and when I'm talking about 95%, I'm talking about your salary. Once we take out the 5% from you, that's it. The, what remains is 9, 9, 9, 9, 5%. You've seen people create two revenue streams out of the 95%. First of all, uh, an extra revenue stream, sorry, out of the 95%. First of all, they have the employment income, and then they have another business by the side. Why aren't we talking about those? Those are the same members of NAPSA. They were able to do that in the 95%. Why are we making an assumption that when we give them the 20%, they'll ap they apply it wrongly? Now, the majority of the people in this country, let's, look about, let's talk about housing. Would you say, Gravazo, that most of the houses in Lusaka were built because someone got a mortgage? The answer is no. They were building it out of the 95% salary that they have. Why are we now making an assumption that someone who can build a house, in you don't build a house in one year, in so many years, when they get the extra money, they will not know what to do with it. I think we are being unfair to the Zambians that have shown a lot of entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship uh, spirit. You, you see them walking the streets. You see them trying to make ends meet. Let's talk about village banking. The, the, our ladies who, are, who, who participated in village banking, they were withdrawing 5,000, some of them 15,000, and putting it to use. How can we turn around that now that they are getting a 20%, they will not know what to do with, what to do with it. I think that's, that's, that's unjust and, and grossly unfair to the people that are actually showing the entrepreneurship spirit. And that, even before the 20% partial withdrawal came in, they were already doing their side businesses. I know people who are employed, they are selling clothes. I know people who are employed, they are doing a uh, chefing business over the weekend. W are you telling me that when they get an extra income, those people would rather go? Would rather abuse it. And abuse and it. And, and, and I want you to. We don't believe I want that. you to pick the question. Now, from the court, editing no. employment history. I think some of these issues are, are questions that we should raise. Uh, we we'll, we'll take note of that and engage you on a one-to-one -one basis to find out what would have happened. Employment history is very critical. If so you they want, they've entered wrongly, but then they want to edit. Yes, but employment history is very critical. You allow that to be free text, anyone entering that and changing it any time, you are going to have a problem. But all that we are saying is there is a way we can deal with that, and all that we need to get is our officers will, deal, will support you to make sure that we can edit that. All that you could do is just make, make proof available. So some of these are not showstoppers, and that's, that's a message I want to put forward. The fact that you try something and fail does not mean you are not going to get your money. It's just an issue of going now to option B, where you engage us on a physical face-to-face uh, -face basis, and then we help you or guide you through the process. There is no one who is going to be denied their 20% partial because NAPSA designed the system. That's not our intention. That's why we have uh, some, some, some steps that we can take to assist you as a member once you prove that you are the member to go through the process and get your 20%. Uh, stray contributions. Like I said, this process is helping us to get to even identify some of these problems I've, 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 I've talked about, like the, the two John Millers uh, that worked for Lubambe. Without this, we, we may not have known uh, that there's such a problem. But because now they want to claim, 
they have raised that as an issue. From and I'm, I'm sure we are going to get the bottom of that and help them and make sure each one of them gets a 20%. As we are saying, the staff on the Copper Belt are already dealing with the two millers case. And that's, that's, that's the way NAPSA is approaching this. We are not going to turn you away and say, you are, because there's something wrong with your account, you are not going to get your 20%. We'll so all with they you. need is to, is to visit your office? Absolutely. Just SIM registration. Yes. That's why we have national IDs. Why would you swap your name? I think these are some of the issues we should be taking seriously. When they ask you first name, second name, please don't take liberties and start putting your surname as your first name. But will that be addressed? It will be addressed. And those using uh, husband's names on, on All SIM those registration, I mean they then now the NRC has There is different. proof in this country, maybe unless someone got married on the, the traditional system, but even then there should be someone, a chief or a relative who can attest to the fact that this is a husband. We have marriage certificates. Those are some of the issues that can be used to rectify some of the, 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 the issues that are arising here. Let me get, let me get the last caller. Uh, Ch Charles, Charles from Kitwe? Is it, uh, Lusaka, Charles from Lusaka. Please go ahead and give us your contribution. Uh, good evening, Rufazio. And uh, good evening, Gumuyangwa. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, please. Uh, this program is a very good program, and we thank uh, His Excellency, uh, the President HH, and uh, your NAPSA now should be on its toes to really support uh, the civil servants and the other employers who were uh, in abject poverty. So uh, my concern is uh, the issue of uh, some banks. We have some banks that are not registered with NAPSA on the platform. There are some banks like Stand Standard Chartered Bank. We know there are those banks that may not ever come to see NAPSA over this program. And these are salary accounts for officers. And uh, we expect NAPSA now to take a, a step of Charles. approaching those uh, those banks. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Um, um, you, you've got three minutes, so yes. we need we need we need to answer that one. I know you've answered it, but then you can okay. probably repeat and then and then as you go uh, answering these, I need you to also answer the question. This is more like a run on the bank. Everyone wants to withdraw. How safe is the pension scheme? That's one question you need to answer as you go. But then you can pick a question as well. Okay. So I start, I start with, yes, uh, we can start. with, we can with start Charles with and the banks. We approached all banks, and the banks have an association, and there's a way we, we discuss with them on how certain measures uh, we want to implement or work with them to implement certain measures. It's all now up to the banks working with us, their reaction time and what changes they have to make to their system to come to make sure they're on board. But at this juncture, I must thank Zanako, because Zanako is almost like the our go between that is helping all the other banks to come to come on board and they are doing a very good job i must also uh, give a big hand to a big thumbs up to, to absa that have come up and actually said they could help us remove the congestion from the the queues from our office by actually opening up registration points in their premises that is a kind of collaboration that we are very thankful for and this, this is not something that NAPSA is doing alone. We are working with other parties to make sure that it's delivered. And that's a collaboration. Uh, we, we encourage other banks to come on board. And I'm sure that by the end of this week, you'll see that most of these banks will be on board. There's a risk for the banks that are not coming on board. Because I don't think the owners of the money will be waiting for their banks to come on board. They might open an account with those that are available. That's a very big risk, and we don't want to be to, to take it to that level. Would rather the banks came on board and saved their members that are our members. Oh, the oh, fund. Oh, oh, yes. How safe is the fund? It's a pity, actually, that uh, I think most Zambians do not know what NAPSA is. NAPSA services the financial system. The money that we collect from our members goes to service the financial system. We hold deposit with these banks, that's the money they lend. 
So there is no run of 11 billion kwacha that can, can ground NAPSA. NAPSA is much bigger than 11 billion. In short, NAPSA is liquid enough to pay both the Zambia National Provident Fund and the partial store. And the retiree. And the retiree. The we will not find the money gone. That's, uh, it has never happened. It's not going to happen. That's not NAPSA. People should not mistake us for the other pension schemes. That's not NAPSA. NAPSA has never failed to pay retirees. Never. NAPSA is liquid. NAPSA Mr. Myangwa, thank you so much liquid. for coming. Thank you very much. I know you would want to talk and, and explain more, but then we've run out of time. Thank you, thank you so much for thank coming. You. You've been watching Sunday interview, and our guest this evening was a NAPSA Director General, Mr. Myangwa, who will be back next week, same time. Pleasant view.